destroy it. So, as like I said, I love comic stores. I, I, my, and my love is deep. That's why I opened up my own comic store because I know that is the that is the first place that people actually come and and learn about comics, learn about the history, learn about other comics that they might not even have heard of, they might be interested in. And I can say, hey, look, have you thought about this book? You know, and this is what they're basically like spokespeople, historians for the industry. That they basically come out and go, hey, listen, guys, there is so much more than just Superman with his cape flying around. It's not just there's there is like the guy said to me, there is X Men. I he said. You know, I can't even remember, man. It's like 30 years ago. He probably said to me, you know, Hulk, are you interested in that? You know, Hulk smash, are you interested in Batman and all that? No. I didn't come into Batman until about 2003. I didn't start reading Batman until 2003. I didn't start reading um, um, because, I had, a, like I said, I had a five-year period where I just didn't want to touch comics because I lost it in the fire. So I came back in, and what got me back into reading comics is a gentleman by the name of, let me just pull it up here, J. Michael Straczynski. Now, the reason for that is I was going through a real difficult time in my life. I'd just, been, um, just gotten married and just been laid off work, just been made redundant. At the age of 27 and I just had all this free time on my hand for about six odd months there and struggling to figure out what I was going to do I, I had I had put three years of my life into a, into a company to build it up and then you know to earn them millions of dollars in sales and then to be let go when it got tough for them which I fully understand so I started watching Babylon 5, got really into Babylon 5, and and then when I, um, I've, you know, DVD, I think DVDs, uh, videos at that time was, you know, we were just watching videos and all those seasons. So I went down to Invercargill, this is talking about comic shops, right, why comic shops are very important, why I love them, I always love them. Comics, um, I went there and I was talking to the guys about, hey, I, I play, you know, there's a big store and um, they were selling other stuff as well. And they had games and tabletop games. I wasn't into table um, cards and all that, um, but I did end up buying the Simpsons cards because I like the Simpsons card game. And we played Risk there and so on. And he said, "You know what's a, you know?" I, I said, "I'm a comic guy. You know, I haven't been. I've been buying stuff off Trade Me and stuff. Really, you know, not into comics that much. But uh, I see you've got some. Can you recommend anything?" He said, "Oh, what are you into?" I was like, "Well." I'm really into Babylon 5. Is there anything of that? And he's, he said, well, not at the moment or such. Um, but um, he's been writing comics. And I go, what? You mean the guy who created Babylon 5 is writing comics now? He goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's writing comics for, for, um, for Marvel Comics right now. He's working on Amazing Spider-Man, right? And I'm like, really? Yeah, he goes, I... I think we've got a couple here. And I go, oh, I'm really not into Spider-Man. He goes, no, just give it a read. So I started reading Spider-Man. Uh, and like I said, I wasn't really into Spider-Man. I never really got into Spider-Man. I never read Spider-Man, right? Um, it wasn't my thing. And so he goes, well, look, he's 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 been working at a company called Image. Do you know much about them? I said, no, I don't. And he goes, well, there was a series called Rising Stars. And I said, oh, okay, well, what's that about? He goes, it's about superheroes and stuff like that. I go, oh, okay. So do you have them? And he goes, well, no, I, but I can get them for you. And I go, oh, okay, so are you able to? So he goes, you know, he goes, oh, I can look around. I can, I can you know, order them in or see if other shops have them. So I spent probably over a year getting him to order back back issues of the Rising Stars series. Now, if you if you know much about Heroes, the TV series, this is it's basically a ripoff of this. It is. 
It's a basically a ripoff of this. If you've read Rising Stars, you'll know. You understand why I say that. Um, and so, let me see if I can pull. Yeah. There we go. So, this is um, visitation. This is like, um, I think there's a one shot uh, for, um, I mean, it's, it's just, sorry about the glare, but it's just it's such a, um, iconic characters such a well developed this is a a leather bound edition of the first volume uh and i'm very grateful for it because and i don't know how much it cost me but it never came with a slip case which is weird but because it's got his signature on it right so just look at this um, this is the act one leather bound cover i think i paid 60 dollars for it or something like that maybe a bit more i'm not sure this is a while back when i was actually you know, had um, surplus money. So it's just such an amazing, you know, look at the artwork on this. If I remember right, this, um, sorry, uh, Jones, right, the, um, might have done the artwork on this. Let me just check just to be sure. Um, where are we? So on this, this is a half. This is um, like, a, they did a whole bunch of like special things. This is uh, what part of, um, it, is this a Wizard World? No, this isn't. This was put out by Joe's Comics, and from Top Cow, one of their like their creator own sort of series. So, you've got amazing, amazing work on the series Rising Stars. I mean, you know, it's just beautiful things. And like, if, uh, I think they might you might be still able to get it, of course, from the image um, site, Top Cow site, and. Um, now, and this because it's a lead, um, this in this leather bound, there isn't much um, apart from the covers, reprints. There isn't much extra, extra, you know, normal extra um, like design work and stuff. So they did a whole bunch of like halves, point, um, you know, point fives and singles like that. So because of course I'm one of those completists kind of people. So if I if I know if I like somebody's work, I would just keep buying that until it's finished. So, talking about that, oh, there's the half. Oh no, this is a point zero that they did exclusively through Wizard Magazine. All right, so I think I bought this off Trade Me at some time. So it was really, um, you know, being able to get these. These used to come uh, like either as a send away with the Wizard Mag, um, the now defunct Wizard Magazine. Um, this is them there. All right, you could get them free with them sometimes, or there was other ones where you could have to send away, and um, you know, send away little little mail orders to get some special um, stuff, like little comics and stuff like that. Or even uh, sometimes they'd have like uh, figurines you could get and cards. But the other thing that was it had was this, the most favorite thing that I loved about it was this like um, Overstreet um, sort of things about catalogs about um, value of comics. Which is what got me really into the whole side of value of comics, uh, investment-wise. But not because I want to sell my comics, but I want to know how much they're valued financially. <laughs> you know, like, like I'll say, I'll go out and search out these comics and go, mm -hmm. I wonder what they're worth now. You know, um, because I used to always every comic I'd have, and this is like ever since I got to, um, before, once I got into X Men, I used to buy the Bag and Bone thing. Right, so you just leave them. You put them in a in a bag and bone, what we used to call. I'm not sure if they still call them now, but you get you get a piece of cardboard. Costs you fifty cents, um, or sometimes cost you. Um, back then, it used to cost us fifty cents for the board end of the bag. So you straight away used to go in there, into my box, and stay there. So this one here with the rising stars, right, um, as a number zero, was to let people know. There's a new comic book coming out, and get people's interest in them. Now you can just basically go on uh, on YouTube, make a video, uh, or on a website, whichever company you're with, and go, hey, talk to the people and announce that this is what's happening. So you had this really, really cool little sort of like an intro uh, as a background, you know, set up to what's going on. You got to hear who's going to be the artist on this Rising Stars comics. So you got pencilers Q Cha. 
uh, Incas, Jason, Gorda, li um, Colors by Liquid, Letters by Dennis Heisler, uh, uh, David Wall was an editor there. So you've got Mark Silvestri, that's the name I forgot, sorry guys, about the four guys at um, Image. Mark Silvestri was the uh, um, chief of, CEO of, um, of um, Top Cow. So Top Cow was kind of like, a, you know, part of the offset of, um, Image comics that would do like kind of like in the more um, creator own side of things. So, you know, there was this, such beautiful, beautiful artwork, is what, you know, and the story, you know, you knew that the story was going to be amazing because it's written by friggin' J. Michael Straczynski, right? So, I basically try to get every single thing as part of the Rising Stars because it's one of my favorite runs of comics. Um, and so, I would get the halves, I would get the point fives, I would get the, um, the zeros, um, and, you know, all the other shows. So, the preludes, oh, as I'm looking through all my comics here, so, you know, even the preludes, you got this amazing character here, right? This is the thing about um, of, um, the Rising Stars, you know, they had so many beautiful, beautiful characters with their own powers and its structures uh, it's you got if you got nothing to read right now you know think about jump on uh, image and see if they've got it all you know if they've got it on um, digital uh, on their website you can basically go and grab that so I basically he did about I think about 23 issues and then they hit a fallout with uh, with image over something or other and so they ended up he ended up going off and I think at that point he went off to write for, oh, just before that, he went off to write for um, Marvel. But he also, while he was there, if I can grab it, he did a series through Top Cow called uh, Midnight Nation, right? And Midnight Nation is a, um, is a very sad story out of i'm um, sorry it's a story out of something said that happened to jms in real life jms was attacked one night and he was put into coma now i understand that fully well because i was attacked one night and passed out and on the street basically and um yeah in 2006 so and this is i read the book before then but so there's a 12 issue series um and it's basically i think i'm not sure if it was yeah it would have it was before he did rising stars or during rising stars and it's about his experience uh of you know he, about being in a coma for for a while there and i understand that when he wrote it you know he was trying to deal with the experience of being um, assaulted, of going into coma, and so on. And so, like I said, I'm a completist. So anything JMS put out uh, um, as a short runs, whatever, I went and bought. So I went and bought, got the guy to order me back issues of this. Now, then, then JMS went over, well, I think for a while there, he went over, for at least about five, six years, he went over and worked for, for Marvel Comics before he had a fallout with Jake Q over um, the Amazing Spider-Man series, um, Brand New Day uh, arc, which turned a lot of people off the whole um, Amazing Spider-Man series uh, because of how they destroyed um, Mary Jane and Peter Parker's marriage. I don't mean day by um, JMS, but I mean by Jay Cosetta and Marvel, because Jay Cosetta decided, uh, John Cos Joe Cosetta decided that, you know, we can't have a married couple, married couple, in uh, in uh, in Amazing Spider-Man, even though everybody had been reading it and enjoyed it, and you know it was like his he could go home to Mary Jane at the end of the day to a normal life, and couldn't have that. He could he has to always be fighting fighting enemies villains, so that sort of ended that thing with those guys so but while he was there and i'm not sure how many times you might have watched um, or actually watched thor right let's moving on to thor now the movie uh jms 
did an amazing revitalization, reworking of Thor for Marvel. This meant that um, he, um, you know, he he brought back Thor into the Marvel universe in a most productive and amazing characterization way. He was able to um, develop the character to where you could just you could enjoy reading it. Now, Copel, uh, I can't remember Copel's first name. Um, he he's the artist on that and. Basically, they did a run, and from number one onwards, he came in, and I've got most of my covers actually variants. Uh, so, but if you, this is the number one issue with the God of Thunder, and look at the artwork on this. Uh, sorry, it's in a glare there, but it's just, yeah, I mean. I wasn't even interested in Thor, but I got interested in Thor because of the writer, right? So it's just, and so what happened was then they they looked at this when they did Iron Man, they thought, hey, why can't we do this into a Thor movie? And one of the people that actually, and, and, the, re, and the whole, um, I guess, um, reason we have a good thought is because jms wrote it as a good thought as not as a good thought character but as a good thought movie story character uh, and you know i didn't like him in endgame i thought it was a joke um way to go to destroy a great character but hey um so yeah otherwise without jms we wouldn't have this amazing series of thor movies and him and avengers and all that of course, they could have brought him back, but he wouldn't have been the same character. Now, so he did Thor. As I mentioned, he always did Amazing Spider-Man, right? And he did a, uh, he um, introduced a character called Morlin into it. Um, and that was a really cool thing. So, but the other thing he did, he brought back a, a an old, um, an 1980s uh, Marvel series called uh, Squadron Supreme. So Jameis basically looked at um, at the um, at the old comic books that Marvel had done, and he said, "Well, why don't we bring back this this team of um, superheroes that you've created uh, that are part of um, part of you know Marvel, but based that were based on Justice League called Squadron Supreme." So what he then did was, uh, excuse me. Uh, too many comics here to pull out. One we want to see is uh, he came out and he put out a comic called Supreme Power. He wrote a series, uh, I think it was for 24 issues, called Supreme Power. Uh, and these characters, of course, like I said, are based uh, in the 90s based on Justice League for Marvel Comics called Squadron Supreme. Uh, so he called it Squadron uh, Supreme Power, gave it its own name and stuff. And he got a bit of flack from uh, Peter David over at DC, who was writing over at DC at the time, which I thought was quite a weird to like, you know, trying to sort of like uh, attack someone for revitalizing a comic series that had been dead. Of course, Peter David <laughs> ended up working at Marvel. I guess maybe it was his way of getting rid of JMS and trying to get his gig. Who knows? So, um, like I said, it's nothing new, um, people attacking people over what their works are doing. So, um, Supreme Power is an amazing series of mature um, comic books written, um, written under the imprint uh, Max, um, Marvel Max, um, especially geared towards mature readers like myself, um, you know, mature in content not in artwork kind of thing so like the the stories are more geared to uh older readers now the other thing it's a really good book to read sorry guys i should say it's uh, yeah it's one of my all time i want to see this being made into a movie supreme power they've got the characters there they've got arborian they've got um uh gosh night i think it's nighthawk characters there and um so many, this you know, you've got your uh, Amazon, 
you know, you got your, um, I can't remember her name, but this is uh, the Wonder Woman character as part of them. And I, I wish I'd remember to pull out my um, Squadron Supreme a graphic novel I've got here somewhere. But I've been moving things around and, you know, things aren't where they should be. But because um, I'm really, you know, have had time to move things around and shuffle around things and get all my comics out so I can get the easy access to them. But, but um, obviously, I didn't check where that was. Otherwise, I'd pull it out and show you this trade paperback of the 12 issues I've got. Um, now, I actually might have sold the single issues because I had a trade, I think, to one of my friends. So it's really, really good comic to read right now, right? And the stories are amazing. Now, another thing that happened while... Uh, while Joe was over, um, let me see. While Joe was over at Marvel, was that he worked on a uh, on Doctor Strange, and he he basically. So this is a series. It was called Strange, and as you can see, the right uh, here we go the magic uh, circles that they create. So this is the look of the new Doctor Strange that now you see in, in, the, in the movie, Doctor Strange movie, right? And him in the Avengers and all that. So he revitalized Doctor Strange as well. He made him current and up to date. The storyline is brilliant. And that was for Marvel Knights. So it was a bit more mature than your everyday teenage, um, you know, over the counter, not over the counter, sorry, wrong word, that, you know, all ages book. So it wasn't an all ages book. It was kind of like a more, another, um, Marvel Knights was like a, you know, you could control what you want to write and stuff like that. Uh, but also it was a bit more well-developed, more story uh, content wise. Uh, like I said before, with the Max, it was more mature. Whereas this one is, you know, the uh, um, the creator had a thing. So he worked with Barnes on that, with the uh, um, with um, artwork and Patterson. So now that's why we have a really good Doctor Strange. Otherwise, we'd have this wishy washy green, you know, whatever uh, looking guy. But now we have Doctor Strange. So a lot of what we see in um, and the current um, MCU uh, entertainment universe, right? The Marvel Universe uh, and the movies, Thor and Doctor Strange, all right? What is that like about a sixth or something of that of the um, series? Um, so it's due to JMS making great characters. I mean, Strange alone. Right, and then as I mentioned before, Thor. Now later on, uh, Bendis um, did an Ultimate Power series, trying to bring unite because hey, they said like, oh, you know what? Remember Supreme Power? We sold a lot of books on that. A lot of people loved it. Why don't we bring their world into the Marvel universe? They they live in the um, yeah, they live in the old their own universe with the Supreme Power. They run their own universe. Why don't we bring them into um? you know, Bandis's, uh, the new range of Ultimate Universe, right? And so they did. They brought him into the Ultimate Universe and basically it fell flat because now it was like a, over the, you know, all ages type book. It didn't have, you know, teen, as you can see there, well, like rate of a teen plus, whereas before it was Max, Marvel Max, right? So because that it fell flat, it didn't have the same gutsy, you know, a Hyporian, like, you know, Hyporian just going at people and just tearing in people and being that crazy um, Joker type person. Uh, and then they try to make him into Superman, you know, and it didn't work. Uh, and it just, it was an okay read, with Bendis writing it, of course, it kind of didn't have the same kick that it had in the in the Supreme Universe. 
the supreme power universe um had a whole range of um their own little um uh mini series um i think i've got them all um and they you know they were like um if I remember right like as i mentioned before there was if i can find it i think i showed showed it before oh, there's too many books here to look through but let's find it um just like just like the rising stars you know there's a whole bunch of mini series there this is the first cover um i'll just get back to this. this is the first cover of strange the doctor strange stories for marvel knights this is this is him up up in the mountain looking to get his um you know learning the powers getting because what the story is that of course we all know that he's a doctor doctor strange he's um he's an amazing um doctor uh, with operations and stuff and one night um due to something happening his both his hands are crushed and so he learns about this uh, mountain shaman and learns how to get his hands to work again so magic he learns magic and all this other stuff right so are you so there was also a um, serious by oh they also introduced they meant to fantastic four characters so bring him right into fantastic four bring him into avengers uh you know you've got him going up against thor amazing art on the cover this is um this one here uh written by um land art by land Straczynski there that's on uh, issue five of nine. So you had like um, Bandis working on it. You also had Straczynski working on it. Um, try and tie it out. So this is what I was mention, um, trying to mention here. So you had like um, Supreme Power Nighthawk. Right. Um, so Nighthawk is basically a Batman. Uh, and then you had um, the um, Squadron Supreme Saga. And there was Hyporian uh, versus Hyporian versus Nighthawk, and that was done through, yeah, all limited series Marvel, all ages um, series. Like I said, Hyporian doesn't doesn't really work in the Marvel universe because his whole basis of his character, um, yeah. They tried, they wanted to bring him in, but he's a killer, right? He's Superman with uh, extreme powers that he doesn't really, he's been raised to be, you know, a communist. Not a communist, but a fascist kind of thing. He just, you know. Um, so there's that. Then, of course, there was a, there was another series, so they, um, you know, uh, with the Squad oh, I think I just pulled that up, but the Squadron Supreme. So there was like a, I think it was a limit series I did run there with J, um, JMS writing. Got here. Just don't want to damage my comments while I was mucking around with all this stuff. Back and forth. Um, let me see. So there was there's 24 issues in the squadrons, um, sorry, Supreme Power comic series, and if you like reading, a, if you're old like older like me, uh, you know, and want something outside of the teenage book series, Supreme Power is a good book to read. Uh, also, like I said, you know, Rising Stars, man, give that a read. Give that a really good read. You know, the artwork alone is amazing on this. The covers are beautiful. Uh, you know, they just amazing artwork. Um, you know, and there's it's only 24 issues. So, and then if you want to read the mini series, they're, they're like about four to six issues each. There is Bright, there is Untouchables. Um, what else? Let me see here. Oh, yeah. And so the other one from sorry, from Supreme Supreme Power, is also uh, Dr. Spectrum, one of the other characters. So Dr. Spectrum 
it's basically um, Green Lantern. So, like I said, the Squadron Supreme is based upon the the DC's um, Justice League, and so they have their own kind of parts. But the thing about the Squ uh, Supreme Power characters is they're much more mature, much more aggressive, much more power hungry, uh, much more. Um, they don't always act like heroes, and they're not really always heroes. And um, you know, they're really, really good, good stories to read. Okay, um, I think that's me for today, guys. Thank you for watching again. Sorry about the hiccup at uh, the start. Um, I'm, I'm learning this new, a new software, and it takes a bit of a while getting used to it. But like I said, and as I was, if you guys want to come on and join me on these things, I would, I would love you to come and hang out with me on live stream. I know sometimes, you know, it's hard to be face to face with people to the, to the social media universe, but if you want, you can use an icon to hide your face and just talk to me. Um, also, debate, man. I, you know, I don't. You don't always have to agree with what I say. I welcome debate. I welcome um, new ideas and new thoughts. It's uh, it's all you know. It's art. It's storytelling. What I, I will always stand. Um, strong on is the fact that I don't like to see old characters being changed. I, if you want to make new characters, go for it, do whatever you want with it. But I don't want to see old characters being changed. And as we, and as and as I said before, like you see, you just as I said before, you see um, Supreme Power being brought into, and I don't know if JMS did it, or if it was his suggestion, or if it was um, or editors at um, thing to do it. See. If they left it in the Marvel Max universe, they could still be writing that right now, on and on in that sort of area um, line. Because Marvel Max was like um, Mar um, Marvel Max was like Marvel's Vertigo range, uh, and it was really good. And it's you know most of Punisher, right? Most of Punisher, good Punisher stories came out of Marvel Max with Garth Ennis writing them. Um, Talking of which, I think I had a Barracuda um, one here, Punisher versus Barracuda hardcover somewhere here. Yeah. Oh no, it's versus Bullseye. So yeah. Like I said, this is um, Jason Aaron and Steve Dillon. Steve Dillon, the late great Steve Dillon and art. And this, man, I wish I'd taken this to Auckland um, because this artwork's by jo Aaron, um, is what Aaron Johnson. I think it's David Johnson, but Johnson, you can see uh, he um, he was here in Auckland a couple of years ago, and I had him uh, sign a lot of my comics. Uh, Dave Johnson, Dave Johnson, yeah. So we'll talk about J Dave Johnson another time. So thank you for for me, you guys, um, and like yeah, give give both the um, where are we? Midnight Midnight Nations um, Nation from Top Cow Comics a read by Jeff J. Michael Strzinski. Give all. Uh, Rising Stars, a must read. This is one of my top reads. I have all of them, all single issues, like even the zeros and halves and point fives and whatever's. All right, and even the wizard books. Good book. Um, the other one was, grab it here, is um, Supreme Power from Marvel Max, and it's really cool. And if you're just joining me, uh, that's Supreme Power is based on Squadron Supreme, which was based on DC's Justice League, which Marvel basically took over and came up with their own uh, range of characters. And so, it's a, Supreme Power is a really good read for for mature read. It's a mature reader's book, and it's just artwork is amazing. It has its own like uh, limited series, um, like you know, as I mentioned before, like uh, Hyperion versus Nighthawk. It's a Nighthawk series. And you know, one of my favorite covers. All right, so and yeah, I actually own two copies of this. Number one, I was able to pick up a second copy another time because I love this this cover. And I remember printing it as a poster on my wall when I was at when I was film um, film school. Um, all right, thank you guys for joining me. And hey. Uh, 
give a um, give a subscribe on our YouTube page. Uh, and it, this hopefully this will be on YouTube. I'll get around to getting this on YouTube soon. But thank you for joining me today. We're talk, um, talking about um, J. Michael Straczynski. Cheers, and all his work at Marvel and Image Comics. And of course, he also went over after his fallout with um, J J Jake Crusader over over the destruction of my um, Mary Jane and Peter um, Peter Parker's marriage. He left the company and went over to work for DC. He worked on Wonder Woman and he worked on um, Amaze. Um, sorry, on um, Superman comics. So yeah, and the. And he also did a whole a lot of um, year ones over at um, mini mini series, I think six series of year one of um, I think it was Superman as well as Wonder Woman as well. So a whole bunch of others. And those year one shows um, were so good that Marvel did the same thing. But yeah, so thank you for watching. Catch you around again.